welcome, welcome. It is midday moment. What a great God we serve. Is our God. Our grave. Is our God. What a great God. Welcome, welcome. How great is our God. It's our God. Welcome, it's midday moment. Thank you for joining us here for our Wednesday midday moments. I appreciate very much at whatever time you're pausing to, to receive what I have to say to you today for our midweek, our midday moment. Let me invite you now to join me in a word of prayer. God, our Father, how gracious we, we are and grateful we are that we have this privilege to come before you who are a gracious God. God, we thank you for today and thank you for life and health and strength. We thank you that things are as well as they are. God, we ask our, your choice blessings now upon our time that we have to share. Pray to God that a word will be deposited word will be given that might be uplifting, inspiring, encouraging. God, how we give you glory, honor, and praise for being the God that you have been, the God that you are, and the God you will always be. Bless now these moments we have. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, today my midday moment is entitled, Take the next step. Take the next step. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2 from the New King James Version is our passage today. As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. I love that. As newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. It's always amazing to watch a baby grow, isn't it? Babies start out with milk for their nourishment, then they move to baby food, and then they are fed digestive adult food. And eventually they graduate to feeding themselves. Because as a baby grows, it begins to discover that they have strength, they have ability. And then a baby who's crawling discovers some kind of way, this idea that they can move, or take another step from crawling to walking. A baby can do that because it's been getting the nourishment that it needs to grow. And as a result, the nourishment in, that it needs to grow, all of the physical things are working well. And so the nourishment plus the physical ability connects and the baby makes the next step. Baby moves from crawling to walking. Because growing up is a process. And just like we desire our babies to grow, we want to or we should want to grow up as Christians, as believers. We should want to mature in our faith. And when we grow up, we grow up spiritually, supposedly, into maturity, into responsibility, and into the character of God. We just do not pray for growth, but we also pray for maturity. 
So we pray that our children grow. We pray for that, but we also pray that they will be responsible. They will grow into maturity. They will be accountable. We don't just want our children to be physically healthy. We want them to be morally, mentally, economical, vocational happy, healthy. It's a part of the maturation process. Spiritually, we want to grow into maturity as believers. Now, I think we have to understand that maturity in faith is not measured by how old you are. Growing up and becoming mature as a believer can't be measured by your age. It needs to be measured by your attitude and your action. Remember, it's possible to go from infancy to senility and never experience maturity. As children of God, there are some things that we should be able to grow out of. Because Christ has grown up in us. There are some things I believe as believers that we should outgrow. We should outgrow those things that are trivial. Those things that are childish. Because Christ is growing up in us. As mature Christians, we should, we should, we should outgrow some things in life that once caused us to struggle or once caused us to be stretched. But once we really grow up in Christ, we learn to be conquered those things and not be conquered by those things. That's part of the maturation process is that as we grow in Christ, we learn to conquer things that once may have conquered us. Now, there are signs of maturity that demonstrate what I call personal and intentional growth. I'll just list some of them. One is, you know you're maturing, or you have matured, when you learn to walk away from people and situations that threaten your peace of mind, your self-respect, your values, your moral, or your self-worth. Yep. You learn you know you are absolutely or actually growing or have grown when you can walk away from people and situations that threatens your peace of mind, threatens your values, your morals, or your self-worth. Another mark of maturity is when a person hurts you and you try to understand the situation rather than than hurting them back. That's another sign of growing. Other signs of maturity is when you can forgive without being asked to forgive. Another sign of maturity is you are less judgmental and more empathetic. Another sign of maturity is when you choose to listen more and pray rather than engage in talk that's really going nowhere. You know you're maturing when you are more powerful and less defensive and argumentative. Those are just some, some hallmarks, in my opinion, of maturity, of growing up in Christ. Again, again, you cannot measure your maturity by your birthday. Just because you have another birthday doesn't always mean that you're growing up. You got to measure your maturity by your action and your attitude. In the New Testament, in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 45, it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the passage that indicates that 3,000 people became converts to Christianity as a result of Peter's sermon. But they didn't just get baptized. They didn't just get baptized. They got baptized and then they wanted to grow. Apparently, they desired to grow. Because the Bible says that after they gladly received the word and were baptized, 
they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in the breaking of bread and fellowship in prayers with each other. It's, it's an indication to me that those 3,000 that got baptized, they had a desire to grow. They had a desire to know more about the faith and the fellowship they were baptized in. Of course, the apostles' doctrine was the teachings of Jesus. It was the word of God. These people understood that their real development went beyond baptism. They had to be developed and grow in understanding the word of God. You know, the reason some believers, some Christians do not go grow is because they don't have a real good foundation of the word of God. You know, it's Bible study. It is Sunday school. It is being connected with someone else who may have a, a stronger foundation in the word than you that helps you to grow. It's having a prayer partner or a prayer group. Growth spiritually just doesn't happen automatically. You have to continue to be nourished. You have to make sure that you're in an environment. You are connected to things that help you to mature, to grow from being a baby in Christ to being a mature person in Christ. In the same way, when we come to Christ, we are spiritual babies. The Apostle Peter again writes, as newborn babies, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So remember, we first of all, we need the milk. But you can't stay on milk. You've got to come off the milk, come off the baby food, and you have to learn how to digest more of the, the, the spiritual meat of the word of God and the spiritual principles. That's important. That's part of spiritual maturity. It is not just drinking from the bottle. It is being able to digest solid food. And the way we grow in Christ, we grow by worship. We grow by word. We grow by fellowship. We grow by Bible study. We grow by Sunday school. We grow by, we grow by personal reflections and devotional. We grow by being connected to others who are growing. So remember now, spiritual maturity or maturity has nothing to do with how many birthdays you have. Real maturity has everything to do with actions and attitude. As believers, here again, we also have to have a desire to grow in Christ. There has to be in you and I a hunger and a thirst to grow in Christ. It's not a hunger and a thirst that, that one may be known for being knowledgeable. No. It's not a hunger and a thirst that one may be perceived as knowing the scriptures and being able to recite the scriptures. No. This hunger and a thirst is a personal hunger and a thirst that you might know him at a deeper level. You hear the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 talks about, he says, not that I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I might be apprehended for that which also I am apprehended of, apprehended of Christ Jesus. Then Paul says in verse 10, Paul says he wanted to know him and know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto death. Paul had a desire not to just stay a babe in Christ. He wanted real, authentic, spiritual maturity. And in order to do that, he had to spend some time in the Word of God, in prayer, in reflection, and he had to spend some time being connected to other believers. As believers, there ought to be, I think, a desire to grow closer to God. I believe that as believers, there ought to be a desire to have a real personal peace, to have an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. 
This desire doesn't mean that we are better than anyone else. And it doesn't mean that our lives are perfect. And it doesn't mean that uh, we have an edge on everybody else. It just simply means that we desire to be in a place and to be in a state of presence where we are comfortable with our own walk, our own worship, and our own witness for the Lord. However, unfortunately, some Christians have never taken the next step. There are so many believers who are just satisfied with membership in a church and not discipleship in the church. There are so many members who are just satisfied with being a Sunday morning worshiper and, and, and not a, a person who's more engaged and involved in ministry so that they can grow and demonstrate their growth. We find it more realistic, more true than ever, that a lot of people have this, what I would call, this brill cream mentality when it comes to church. Just a little dab would do me. Christ is looking for those who've come into the church as babes to learn, to desire, to want to know more of him, more of his words. Christ is looking for people to go deeper with him and deeper in their faith. And there are many Christians who never take that next step. There are many believers who just do not desire to grow up in Christ. They are, without a doubt, they are wonderful persons. They are wonderful people. They are believing people. But they have very little interest in knowing more about the faith. They just don't value this idea of fellowship of the saints. They don't really, really value this wonderful experience of corporate prayer or even one-on-one -on -one prayer. And then they just think that worship ought to be cold and, and, and calculated. Uh, they want engaged in worship with a sense of fervency. Uh, too many believers are still at the same level in Christ that they were when they confessed him. There are too many believers who are still at the same level of giving. And yet God has continued to bless them and bless them and bless them to another level of, of receiving, but they're at the same level of giving. There are too many believers who are at the same level of witnessing that they were when they first came to Christ. But two Christians have little problem, in my opinion. Here's what I know. That when believers and Christians mature in the faith, when they move from baby food to, to, to real strong meat, meat, mature Christians have little problems with forgiving. Mature Christians have little problems with giving. Mature Christians are consistent in worship. They are involved in ministry because they recognize that's a part of growth. Remember again, remember again, number one, that maturity has nothing to do with your birthday. It has, you can't measure your maturity by how old you are got to measure your maturity by your actions and your attitude, your investment in the things of God. And secondly, part of your maturity and taking the next step is you got to have a desire. You got to have a hunger, a thirst for more of God. You don't want to just be satisfied with what you have in God or with God now. As a believer, you want more fellowship, more faith, more word, more worship more prayer, more presence, more Holy Spirit. You've got to desire that. And, and here is the, the final analogy. Maybe the biggest problem is that many Christians is that they are still too close to their faith or to Christianity to where they got in at. I, I use this analogy a lot about the little girls who kept falling out of bed Several times a week she was falling out of bed. And finally, after several times, the mother had a conversation with her about, 
baby, why do you just keep falling out of bed after you get in the bed? And the little girl had a classical answer. She said, well, mama, maybe the reason I keep falling out of bed is because I'm sleeping too close to where I got in the bed at. You know, one of the problems may be that too many believers, too many Christians, are still too close to the Christianity, to the church, to the faith. They're still too close because they're still right at the very point where they came in at. You know, in order for us to really grow, we got to move over. We got to move over a little in the center of the bed, of the bed of our faith. We got we to gotta move over to the center of God's will. We got to move over to the center of God's way. We have to become more intentional to grow. And, and that means that we got to go deeper in our faith and deeper in our fellowship and wider with Christ. To really grow in your faith, you just have to desire that you want more than just a Sunday morning encounter with God. You want to have a daily encounter with God. Too many of us may be just satisfied with staying at the same level. We've got to learn that we uh, we got a desire to go higher with God in, in our attitude of faith in our attitude of worship, in our attitude of praise, in our attitude of service. we got to go higher and deeper in the Word of God. As we remain in the faith, there should be some personal growth that affirm that we are no longer babes in Christ, that we don't need the milk of the Word, but we can handle solid food. We can handle the solid Word of God. We can handle the solid witness for God. The question is, have you grown spiritually? Well, maybe the question would be, do you really want to grow spiritually? And are you willing to make the commitment to grow spiritually? I promise you that maturity is not about how many birthdays you have. It's about your action and your attitude. Maturity is about, do you really desire to know more of him? Or are you one of those brill cream Christians? Just a little dab will do me. Maybe your problem is, maybe there's so many problems, maybe, that we're still too close to the faith to where we got in. Well, God bless you. I pray that I have blessed you in some small way. He's a great God. I pray about God. Sing with me. Well, God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. I hope in some small way I have encouraged you. I have given you thoughts to ponder. I pray that if you need to take the next step, you are encouraged to do so. Until we meet again. Amen.